Welcome back to DIY with KB. If you're new here, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. Now today I'm telling you what your interior design style says about you. Yes, we're talking about stereotypes. If you like modern design, does that make you a snob? If you like farmhouse, are you a wannabe Joanna Gaines? We're gonna talk about all these things today and I promise it's gonna be a fun one. Before we get into today's video, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And if you want me to design your home, click the link in my description box for my virtual design sessions. Now let's get into today's video. Now of course, today we're talking about all of the different design styles, and we're not just talking about stereotypes. It's not all fun and games. Some of these stereotypes are based in fact, and other of them are just total misconceptions. At the end of the day, I want your home to look however it is you want it to look. So if you want your house to look like a farmhouse, even though you live in the middle of the city in an apartment, that's fine with me. There are so many good facets to each of these design styles and we're gonna talk about every single one of them. Now let's start out with modern interior design. So some of the backhanded things and stereotypes that I hear about modern design are as follows. The first one that I always hear is, Ugh, you don't have any creativity. All you did was bring the showroom home. Now people say this about me all the time and that's fair. What I will say first is I like the showroom. It looks really nice, but actually modern design really requires a ton of creativity because you tend to be working with a really, really simple color palette. You normally only have a black, white, and gray. So then it's about adding dimension. You do that through different materials, different textures, different shades of a color, different fabrics, layering. There is so much intention actually that goes into curating a home that is modern that I think it actually requires a lot more creativity than some other design styles. Why don't we look at this room? So you're like, ugh, it's a gray room. It's not just a gray room. You see they layered these two carpets. They're different shades of gray. They have different colors. They were really intentional about the orientation of these rugs. You'd also see that they incorporated marble throughout the room. There's marble on the fireplace, near the bar, and then the coffee table is also marble. So again, those were decisions that it required a lot of thought because it's not just a marble piece of furniture. They actually built marble into the home. They also introduced different fabrics. As you see, the sofa is all velvet and the chairs are maybe a leather or something like that. And then there are also tons of shapes in this room. Again, the color palette is very simple, but the sofa is extremely modular, whereas the chairs are very curved and super interesting to look at. The second stereotype about modern design that I hear all the time is that you're just trying to look rich. Um, and I think that's fair. I guess like modern design can be really expensive because you see that all the time at Restoration Hardware and they're charging you $10,000 for like the catalog. But in reality, modern design can actually be both very expensive and also very affordable because think about stores like Ikea. They have those Vesta units. They have the mom beds. They have really clean lined angular furniture that actually makes for the perfect modern home so you can either spend a lot of money or virtually no money at all and achieve the design style so at the end of the day it isn't actually about looking rich or anything like that it's actually about comfort a lot of people choose modern interior design because they don't like too much clutter they want everything to have a function but they also want it to be aesthetically pleasing the last stereotype that I hear all the time is that if you are a modern um, interior design lover that you are allergic to kids you can't have kids it's just a bachelor pad well I'm a woman who lives with another woman and we have a modern home. So it's not just for bachelors or bachelorettes. You can have a family and live in a modern home. What I will also say about this is that you actually can have a modern home and have kids. Now, I think that there are two very different types of modern. There's all white modern and then there's modern that's very dark and moody. So when you have kids, no, you're not gonna do the all white modern where you have the all white sofa, the all white ceiling, the all white decor. That's not practical because they're gonna get their crayons and they're gonna mess it up immediately. But when you go with modern with like really darker colors, it's actually way easier to hide anything that your kids do. You have the darker walls. If you spill the juice on the sofa, it's not gonna ruin the sofa. It's just gonna blend right in. It might even add a little bit more dimension. So you just have to be really intentional with how you curate your modern space. The next design style that we're going to talk about is farmhouse. Now farmhouse gets a really, really bad rep. It gets a horrible rep. And honestly, I don't think it is entirely warranted. But before we talk about the actual pros of farmhouse design, let me let me present these stereotypes to you because I was over here laughing my butt off. The first one is 
If you're into farmhouse design, that means that your favorite celebrity is the Pioneer Woman. And don't get me wrong, I actually love the Pioneer Woman. Her recipes are amazing. Her cinnamon toast recipe, to die for. <laughs> but literally everyone I know who likes farmhouse is a huge fan of the Pioneer Woman. Another stereotype that comes with farmhouse design is that your next trip is definitely to Waco. Now, you guys are following me because you like modern interior design, so hopefully, hopefully, you don't know what's in Waco, but that's where Joanna Gaines is based, that's where Magnolia is, and everything there is all farmhouse all the time. There has not been a single design of hers that doesn't have a clock in it, and you know what? I'm here for it. Another thing that is super common in the farmhouse, I don't know if it's because of Joanna Gaines or not, and the Pioneer Woman, but crock pots. Every lady who is into farmhouse design in her really nice picture of her farmhouse kitchen, you see the really nice Magnolia home crock pot. And there's nothing wrong with that because I own it too and I'm cooking dinner in it tonight. And last but not least, my all time favorite stereotype about the farmhouse interior design is that if there is not a sign, I cannot locate it. Because in farmhouse interior design, you have the wash and dry sign above the dryer. You have the bathroom sign in the bathroom, just in case you didn't know what a toilet was for. You have the coffee bar sign near the coffee, just in case you thought it was cough medicine or tea. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of direction with farmhouse design. And it is a design style that actually really frequently gets made fun of, but I actually think there are tons of pros to farmhouse design. First of all, farmhouse is super welcoming. When you go into a farmhouse, it kind of just feels like home um, because there's so many pillows, there's so many textures, um, and there's so many warm colors. Again, farmhouse design has a ton of rustic elements, so there are those earth tones. Um, there's some really dark colors that are contrasted by very light ones. So again, it really feels nice. It, all the clutter kind of makes it feel smaller, which makes you feel more at ease and like you can actually sit down. Think about a modern home, think about my home. You wouldn't come in here and sit down, no you would not, but in a farmhouse you feel like you can sit down, put your feet up, and have a really nice conversation for a few hours. One of the best things about farmhouse interior design is also that it's really accessible. It's not just accessible in terms of cost because the items tend to be a little bit more affordable than some other interior design styles, but farmhouse is super popular right now. So you can get farmhouse elements at just about every store, whether that's Big Lots, Walmart, Target, Kirkland's, there's always something farmhouse there for you. So if you do not feel inclined when it comes to design or you just don't feel like you have the knack for design, this is still a design style that you can really easily do. Um, and last Last but not least, farmhouse is really conducive to having kids, right? It's super welcoming, they get to make their own signs, um, you can have them sit around and they're not going to create too much mess because there's so many baskets and stuff like that for them to put things in. It's again more conducive to clutter and actually living in a space, which is really important. It's really important to have your house feel like a home and also feel like a place that you can exist in practically. The next interior design style that we want to talk about is bohemian interior design. Now, I thought that I was going to be the queen of bohemian interior design, and then it turns out that it just wasn't for me. I just couldn't deal with all the macrame. So let's talk about the stereotypes. So almost every person that I've ever met who's been uh, a bohemian person is vegan. I don't know why, that's just a stereotype. There's nothing wrong with being vegan. People kind of say that like that's a bad thing. I think it's actually a pretty good thing. Another stereotype that you hear all the time is that if there is not a macrame hanging plant holder in a room, then your house is not complete. I will say it in bohemian design, there are too many pieces of macrame. You know, you just have too much jute cord. You know what I mean? And then there also are an abundance of plants. Now, I think you can have plants without them being suspended from the ceiling, but we can agree to disagree. Last but not least, when people are bohemian, they, ha they happen to be a huge fan of saying that things are vintage, right? If something wasn't pre-owned, if something didn't come from the Goodwill or the vintage store or the consignment store, they don't want it. With all of that being said though, one of the top sellers out of actual bohemian decor is Urban Outfitters, where nothing is recycled, they just made it in the warehouse and told you it was vintage, but they made it literally yesterday. So if you're into bohemian design, that just means that you really like elements of the earth within your home. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. Our homes can feel so sterile sometimes. And when you have bohemian design, you not only have a lot of wood tones, but you actually have life in your home. You have plants, you have greenery, you have florals. It just feels very, very alive. I actually think that bohemian is very close to modern design. It just has a little bit of oomph in it. Um, I think that bohemian design is also really great because like I said, a lot of things do tend to be vintage 
vintage. Of course, a lot of people do buy things from Urban Outfitters that are brand new, but a part of Bohemian Design is having things that look a little bit more used. So instead of buying new things, instead of contributing to landfills and stuff like that, we're reusing things, we're upcycling things, and therefore we're not hurting the earth as much, which honestly I think is a wonderful thing. I think Bohemian Design also is a lot more homey. I think a lot of people actually started out in farmhouse and transitioned into Bohemian. There's still a lot more wall hangings and decor than modern design, but it kind of is a split between the modern and the farmhouse, which I think is really lovely. I would encourage you to explore Bohemian Design if you love texture, you love layering, you want your home to look cozy, but you also want it to look a little bit more refined. Last but not least, I think Bohemian, again, is really akin to modern, but instead of having really dark or all white color palettes, they're just a lot more natural. You have the greens, you have the woods, you have the tans and the neutrals. Um, it's just a lot more earthy and it reminds you of the outside and I actually love that because in the winter time when you don't have the plants outside there's all that snow it still feels really conducive to just having a wonderful spirit when you're working with the bohemian style The next style we're talking about is glam, and glam gets a horrible, horrible rep. Let's talk about the stereotypes. So the first one is if you're into glam interior design, your husband has absolutely no say and you don't care. And that's totally okay. That stereotype is based on the idea that glam is super feminine. Most men wouldn't really be inclined to do that or that's what it stereotypically is the argument behind there, but that is a huge factor in glam design. Another thing about glam is if I cannot see my reflection in it, I don't want it because literally everything in glam, the coffee table, the lamp, the mirror, the um, chandelier, everything, you can see your reflection in it. It's everywhere and there's so much dust and honestly, I don't wanna look at myself all the time because I don't look that good all the time. Honestly, that just puts some negativity in my life. Last but not least, in glam, this is the thing that I actually hate the most is that instead of buying Chanel perfume, why not just get a picture of Chanel perfume and put it on the wall? You know, it costs the same most of the time, so I'd probably just get the perfume. I think smelling nice is more important, but I digress. Those are the things that you normally see with glam design. So glam is actually really similar to modern. Again, the real huge distinction is the difference in color palette. In a glam household, you see a lot of pinks, purples, silvers, and golds. There is a lot of metallic. Um, everything is really nice and shiny and bright, but there are mirrors galore, um, and that can be pretty overwhelming, and it can be a little bit more distracting. In glam design, I actually don't always think that there's more furniture, um, but there does tend to seem like there's more going on because there's so much light being reflected from all the mirrors and all the crystals that it can be really distracting and you don't really know where to look. I think a lot of people shy away from glam because of all the colors, but you actually can do glam design very beautifully with a more neutral color palette. You can just do black, white, and gold, and it is really, really luxurious looking. I think glam, you still have the clean lines like you do in the modern. Um, it's still a really refined look. It's a place where everybody is gonna be like, oh my God, that looks so nice and luxe. Um, it just has a little bit of more pizzazz in it, and you can really dictate how much of that you want and you don't want. With glam, I normally say, let's try to minimize the mirrors a little bit. Let's minimize the crystals, but otherwise, I think it is a really a phenomenal style. What I also really love about glam is that financially, it's actually very accessible because glam things are really popular now in standard stores like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross. They have these things just about anywhere. You can get the prints that you need from Etsy, and a lot of those things are actually DIY worthy, which I love about glam. You know, if you really want a nice centerpiece, you can actually go to the Dollar Tree and get those nice vases, put some crystals on it or spray paint it and it's going to look so luxe. Um, what I also love about glam design is that they tend to have really amazing wainscoting. I mean, that just really matters to me. The wainscoting on your wall says so much about your space. It just looks so regal because they tend to have box trim or something like that and uh, it just looks so good. So I don't think glam design is actually something to shy away from. Sure, there are a lot of stereotypes about it, but there are a lot of stereotypes with all design. At the end of the day, I want you to choose the design style that works for you because you have to live there. And last but certainly not least, we have eclectic design. So defining eclectic design can be so difficult because it means so many things to different people. 
One of the main stereotypes about eclectic is that they think that they're actually too good for interior design styles. They don't want to say that they're modern or glam or bohemian because that is beneath them. A lot of things that I see online are people like, oh, if I'm into eclectic interior design, that just means that I'm waiting for Architectural Digest to call me for my interview. And I think that that's hilarious because almost everything you actually see in those Architectural Digest books are super eclectic. Someone will take their sock and put it in the middle of the floor and they'll be like, this is art and we'll all buy into it. I would buy that sock tomorrow if they told me to do it. So that's okay. Um, and eclectic design, they also have that similar thing to the um, bohemian that um, everything must be vintage, right? If it doesn't have a story, I don't want it. You know, just not everything can have a story. The story is that Walmart manufactured it and they sent it to my front door. Um, but I think eclectic design can be beautiful because <laughs> I think they're right in that they don't subscribe to interior design trends, but I think Eclectic design kind of just like lets you be you. You're not as worried about what other people think. You're not really looking anywhere for inspiration. You're just actually taking the things that you live with and kind of putting them in your home. I think eclectic homes tend to be super practical. I actually grew up in one. The whole house is covered in mosaic and books and my grandma reads every day. So actually the way she's designed her house really works for her. She also does artwork every day. So she really is able to take that art and present it. So she's not just making art and not knowing what to do with it. It gets to kind of be a museum in her own home. So it makes a lot of sense for her. So I think eclectic design is really good for you if you're a creative person or you spend a lot of time in your home and you kind of want your hobbies to exist within your home. You don't want to have to leave to do them. You can do them right in your own space. A lot of these stereotypes exist for a reason, but also all of these design styles are super duper accessible. So just do the one that resonates with you. I hope in today's video, I was able to give you an outline of what each of the design styles are, and now you'll know which one resonates for you. And I know that you have the ability to execute it wonderfully. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to let me know down below which design style you have. I really want to know because I want to know, are you guys like me? Do you like modern or do you like something else? Until next time, have a beautiful day and thanks for watching.